Okay. Preventative measures. I suppose this is a uh, slightly... Slightly different version. Well, actually, we played Plateau last time. Attention! Never mind! You are entering the combat zone. Get ready for battle. Good luck. I'll memorize the map names, I suppose, at some point. Or rather, not the map names, the sub names. Because, you know, these all have, um, well, the, uh, the, what am I looking for here? Uh, layout, right. The layouts all have different names. My favorite one is Danger Zone, however, that's only Tier 1, and, like, that's Tier 1 to 3, which is kind of unfortunate. Okay, so, Garrison first. You are Dataway. The front line. Off we or go. Dataway. Yeah, go fo follow Roland the Headless. I'm sure he'll lead you great places. He has amazing foresight, he says. Uh, here comes the flak. No. Still no. There's a hit. You see, what did that do? Critical damage. He was dead anyway. There we go. One thing I should mention about the cream the premium consumables, they are kind of annoying. Because they do, it's like the premium consumables in World of Warships, where they have just outright better recharge times and whatnot. Their effectiveness doesn't get any better, it's just that the rate that you can use them does. And having those locked off behind gold kind of has the same issue as, you know, it has the same issues that the rounds do in the, in the fact that they become impractical to use, so you're probably never going to see them. But I would think that reinforced control surfaces, having that on a cooldown faster, is more game-breaking than premium rounds. Because reinforced control surfaces allows me to win fights that I normally wouldn't. Because I can turn better and immediately obliterate the guy that I'm firing, I'm, I'm fighting against. If I can get myself into a firing position, he can't do anything. So... That's a little bit more game-breaking. But, uh, on its own, premium rounds? Not that big of a deal. There are other things which are more suspect. And now the ground attack planes want to take a fucking chunk out of me, it looks like. Right. Ah, there's the hit. Delay. Nope. Nope, nope. Cool down. Mm. Excuse me, coming through. Spitfire. Bad. Threatening. But aisle two. Closer. Easier to hit. Dead. Spitfire aware. Spitfire running. Aha! You're diving and you turn worse than me. Getting a little too close to the fucking ground, though. Ow! Oh, it's that fucking Spitfire again. Well, I'm probably gonna die here. Yow! Well, my pilot's dead, so even though I'm not dead... Well! I might as well be. But yeah. You see, the firing position, the position of authority, the top, if you will, is far more important to fighter aircraft than what kind of ammo they're firing. Getting into position to shoot someone where they can't get away from you is far more important than doing slightly more critical damage, and maybe having a ch higher chance of setting them on fire. And also, those things are marked in, like, nebulous sort of icons. 
So I'm not exactly sure how how much of a percentage advantage they actually give you. Once again, leading to most people probably just ignoring them. Enemy bombers detected. So yeah, reinforced control surfaces being better for the premium version is more game breaking than the premium rounds in and of themselves, which is actually a kind of a strange thing. Because most of the premium consumables in the other games are kind of worthless. World of Warships is a different story, but World of Tanks, the only one that's really, like, called for, like, as a, like, a no-brainer, gotta have this, is the automatic fire extinguishers. The... Uh-oh. And there goes my fucking pilot again. Boy, I'm having really bad luck with that guy. I'd like to hit this guy, please. Nope. Well, I got killed by another Spitfire. But like I was saying, automatic fire extinguishers are really the only gotta have that. The the repair kit and the premium med kit? Actually, again, really situational depending on what kind of tank you have. Like, the repair kit's probably like the least, I mean, not, not so, the repair kit's probably the most useful out of those two. The med kit's just kinda like, eh? You could probably get away with taking, like, rations instead of the med kit. I'd like to load in, please. Um, the UI disappeared for no apparent reason. And also, things like, you know, like, oil and everything else that... Well, what should we make? There's oil and then there's remove speed governor, but those cost regular credits. But everything costs regular credits at the end of the day. Like I'm saying, actually the consumables in World of Tanks need a desperate weak re uh, you know, rework. So it's actually kind of interesting to see consumables in this game having such a massive impact. Be advised, a line of thunderstorms is approaching. We'll soon be unable to provide support. Do you copy? Over. But yeah, at the risk of sounding like a broken record again, the active class bonuses, the, those consumables, those consumables are potentially more broken than the premium rounds in this game ever will be. So those need to get looked at. Premium rounds, just take away the gold value and then, you know, actually make them, I suppose, slightly more useful, really. Because it doesn't seem like they're actually useful enough to really use. They just kind of seem like a trap. It's like, oh, you could you could be better if you spent real money, but There's you won't know how here. much. It just says Do in massive copy? quotations, better. It's a really kind of sleazy Russian gambling tactic, really. Get people to spend money on things that they don't really know how useful they are. But it says better, so obviously it is. But is it practical to actually buy them? That they won't tell you. Why? Because they want you to buy them, because they want you to spend money. That shit out of these games really needs to get the fuck out. Uh, excuse me. S excuse me. Excuse, excuse, stand fucking still, lag. Miss. Come on. Seems like at point blank range, it's actually really, it's actually like obnoxiously hard to actually hit the target. Way to go. That hit him Victory and didn't do any fucking damage at all. The mysterious ways of Russian ballistics. One day I will be able to figure out how this works innately and it be an extension of my arm. One day. But today we just fire and pray. Okay, now I'm gonna go find out what the hell was making my plane sound like soda cans in a rainstorm. I think I might be able to get up to him without stalling. Maybe. At least get in range. Ah, there's the hit. And see, critical damage. I don't need those rounds. 
Then again, I am a 45, so a largest caliber. So maybe it's to help the other planes that are deficient, but right now, I don't need that shit. I, I, I highly doubt other people really need it either. Well, head on engagements, everybody. Now it's coming down to the wire, it seems like, and that Spitfire was slightly ahead of me, so it looks like I gotta pull a couple of other points out of the bag here to just kinda show him up. If I can get the damn hits. You see, I fire expecting there to just be way out one shot. But, you know, the game just kind of fucks with me like that. There we go. Down he goes. Keep it up, pilot. You can do it. Seems like the last fucking hurrahs come through. Almost Bam! All enemy aircraft are destroyed. And now it is your turn, bullfighter. Uh, click. Bang. Done. That's the last enemy player. Great <laughs> job today. We'll be waiting for you back home. Well, house is clean, ladies and gentlemen, and look at that. I managed to just eke out just a little bit more against that Spitfire. Ah, uh, feels good. All right. Now that we've got our pride back, let's continue onwards. All right. Wow, look at all those medals. It just I'm running out of room on my chest here. <laughs> all right, so, good game for us. We did, whoa, well, we got 2,000 XP, which is not a whole lot in comparison to the grind that we're trying to do, but, heh, <laughs> 1911. Good luck. <laughs> all right, so. Upgrades. Where are we now? 58,000 to go. See? You play World of Warplanes, you get on camera with me while I cruise through. It's not a very big game. If you're playing around the tiers I'm playing at, you're probably gonna find me. <laughs> but, shout out to Elric JC. Good game. Totally cleaned the fuck up there at that last moment, though, so... Or was he in that game? Is this kind of a delayed message? Hold on here. Let me actually see this. Um... Actually, no, he wasn't. Actually, no, yes he was. Duh. Right. I need to read more before I open my mouth. That kind of goes for a lot of things, but yeah. All right. Shout out to you, Elric. Good job. You didn't do too bad. It's 8,000. You're pulling weight there. You're not this guy. That guy did shit. You're better than that guy. Take that to heart and keep trying. <laughs> All right. So. We have, right, 58,000 to go before we're interrupted. It's going to be a bit of a grind, and uh, the Yak-9U isn't the most shockingly amazing Tier 7 upgrade, I suppose. It's just kind of this plane, but slightly better. But at least we get the same guns after some significant grinding. But, well, we do get a... Well, we get this plane, but fully upgraded, and then we have more upgrades. So... It really is just the same plane with more upgrades. And this plane is doing perfectly fine here with the 45, just cracking people over the heads. So, eh. Not shocking or amazing, but then we get to step into jets after that one. Hopefully. Then again, we might we might do it even earlier than that, depending on how uh, how tight our purse changes. I'm, uh, I'm having strong thoughts about this I-206 here. Very strong thoughts. But I'll save that for when we actually need it. Okay, so... Archipelago again. Balanced command centers. This is... Cover your allies! Hmm. Hit the enemy! And we shall win! This is gonna be a bit silly. Any day now? You see, 
The bots, they're recruiting each other. You see down there? See, the bot is all- yeah, the bot is also a- it, The bot is also a bomber, so it's kind of like- I almost thought that he was trying to recruit a player, and yeah, there's only one player per team here. That's kind of silly. Pilots, get ready for action. Let's or maybe go. not. No? Yeah, that's about the only guy that I would think is actually, uh... But then again, I can't... No? Yeah? Clicky, 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 they're all MACHINES! Except for that one guy. So, me and... Dooglove here are leading machine armies. Of MACHINE MEN WITH MACHINE MINDS! And machine trigger fingers! But, remember, in Fato's universe, they're all waifus. Why? Because it's more endearing. But it's okay, it's like kind of like Girls in Panzer. Nobody actually gets hurt. Or if they do, it's all a video game. See? We can conveniently dodge that. Uh-huh. And why people may say that, oh... Killing bots isn't fun. Well, if you come play the game, you'll at least get target practice for when the real players actually show up. Which, well, honestly, the looking at the game, the I would recommend I'd recommend playing this game to anybody who has any interest in, like, flying planes in general. It's, yeah, it's not a fucking sim. It's not gonna scratch your autism in that regard, but it's still a fun game. If you're looking for an arcade shooter, this is, well, really entertaining. Bomber squadron detected. Engage them immediately. Oh, come on. Uh, XP, could you get out of the way, please? Not getting away from me. I missed. Missed again. Come on, I only need one hit in there. Not even close. There's the hit, but I didn't... I don't think I got him. Nope, didn't get him. Because I have my team was shooting at him. Look at him! Look at him! It's like I called in for wingman support in Ace Combat 6. Oh, come on. That hit you. That hit you, and it should have immediately killed you. Okay, well, the air is slightly clearer now. This guy looks threatening, though. And now he doesn't look very threatening at all, you know, in a massive fireball. Well, maybe he looks threatening to the people on the ground. Okay. Ooh. Hello there. <laughs> yes, I may not be good at actually securing kills, but at least I can, well, get the last hit in. Mm -hmm. I hit that guy twice, but I didn't get a hit sound for one of those. That's weird. Also, what happened to the... What happened there? You see that? Did the bomber- did the bomber formation pull a Strigan team and just, like... Like, make a hard right-angle turn and then accelerate to light speed? What the fuck happened there? Seems like everybody's just kind of dicking around at high altitude. I'm just gonna zip down here and make sure this JU-88 doesn't do anything troublesome. Problem removed. Seems like the bombers are just gonna come over this area no matter what, you know, if we like it or not. Oh, hello. Excuse me. Those are ours. See, look at that. One shot. Hey, hang on here. Hey, hey. Get back here. Uh, 
I wanted to ram him, but you know what? I'll take the kill before I lose out on 75 combat points. Even though there's only one other person in this game aside from me, you know what? I gotta look good. I'm on camera. I must get one billion kills! I must be highest scoring uh, Soviet ace. This is the eternal battlefield after all. I have infinite amounts of time. I'll be like those German aces who only have 200 kills because they sat there shooting at Chaikas for half the war. You know, the kills are rolling in so rapidly here that I might actually get away with Ace. I don't know, though. Because I can't see exactly how many kills I've got. Like, there's destroyed ball defending, but I'm not exactly sure how many kills overall I have. Hmm. We're winning, no? Let the JUA pass. I got stuff to do and it involves more fighters over here. Uh-huh. Done. XP50 is... He's coming back and now we're basically smacking the enemy spawn. This is dangerous. Receiving reports about rapidly I kind of don't want to be here. I think I put myself in kind of a terrible spot. But it may be the most optimal situation to actually get all those kills. I have to be in the enemy spawn to efficiently get all the damn kills. Mm -hmm. However, unfortunately, now I finally put myself in a terrible spot. So now I gotta run! I just gotta go. Ah, there's a fire. Oh no! Ah! Ah, I'm dead. Bell fucking time! Oh well. So let's see here. How many points do I have? There's no way to break the you now. You're on 15,000. And now the, now the squall lines come in. And this is a fairly balanced game, so if I wind up not dying, we should be actually in a... I might break 20,000 if we're, we're in a good spot. Depends, though. We gotta get in there to actually get those kills. You know, before the enemy gets them all. Or rather, my team murders them all. It looks like... All right, so they've got that boomerang. Or rather, wait, hang on here. I've got that boomerang, thank you. Eh. Mm. Okay, that's the act that got me. Ah, there's 20 kills. <laughs> okay, so where to... Where do enemy planes, though? Oh, they're all up there, the bastards. The enemy is about to win. Push harder. We might not win, though. That's the problem. We might not win. We're holding things down, but the bombers getting through are a little bit too much of a detriment. Uh-oh. Where'd he go? Oh, he just zipped right the fuck back up there, didn't he? Son of a bitch. Making me waste my gun. All fighters. Enemy bombers detected. Destroy them. Okay, can we get this hit? Come on, give me the hit. Go to distance. And uh, got him. Right, no, nope, didn't get him. But whatever, close enough. Uh oh, I don't want to be near that fight. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Don't you dare lock onto me, you son of a bitch. I don't think we're gonna get the kill, or rather, get the win. But maybe if I can kill him fast enough. Ah! You fighters, get the fuck out of here, that's my kill. Bow fighters, you know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say, yeah, we're not getting it. 17,000. Come on, get in there. 
Ah, I could not kill the fascist plane! Ah, we still lost anyway. God damn it, I was too possessed by kills. By 18,000. I think that's a new record. I think I've the highest I've gotten is 17,000 before. But yeah, that's what happens when you're thrown in a game with bots. You just kind of go nuts. The other player only managed to get 5,000. Wow. The bots carried him. Unfortunately, I could not capture the bases, even though I was keeping hold of the center point really hard. But... Oh, well! I guess I'm just gonna have to be an immortal god of death somewhere else! Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> 21 aerial targets destroyed. Blackjack. But, yeah. That's pretty good, though I don't expect those situations to come around when there are actual play- But actually, then again, maybe they will. That's the thing. The bots can be actually more competent than players in some capacity, aside from actually, like, dodging fire and put them putting themselves in annoying positions. Players? Players have a tendency to actually be less reliable in terms of actual, like, combat skills, which is kind of funny if you think about it. The machine is better than them. But it seems like, I think a player has better strategic sense. Like, they'll know where to go. And they aren't... Excuse me. They aren't pre-programmed to sort of balance out the situation, like, with not actually... With not actually pressing into a situation too hard. They'll actually use the some of the advantages... ...to their advantage. But in terms of combat, most of the players that I keep seeing just kind of fuck things up. But, yeah. Ha-ha! <laughs> 21 kills. Not bad. Not bad at all. But, uh, unfortunately, that does not get us our plane. And it, that did not win us the game. So, unfortunately, even though we had a monstrously high amount of kills, we only got 1,600 experience. So that's a bit disappointing. But, oh well, had fun. That's the thing. Sometimes it's just entertaining to fly around and shoot things. And that, that's what I think this game does well. War Thunder? Uh, War Thunder can be very hit or miss. <laughs> Get it? Fly around and shoot things is fun. War Thunder, hit or miss. Ha, <laughs> ha. Yeah, you could say, oh, War Thunder's a more skill-based game. Yeah, because it's trying to be somewhat of a sim, but it's not really doing the sim part well if you play actual flight sims. It's kind of just trying to find the middle between an arcade game and a flight sim, and most of the time, it's frustrating the the things that it chooses. Like, it ends up being realistic in the ways that aren't fun, and it, re and it ends up being arcadey in the ways that just come off as bullshit. So... War Thunder has got a... a questionable balance. And honestly, like, the last Grindfest I did was for the Privateer. I got the plane, and I, then I said I was going to come back and actually grind the rest of the plane. Spoiler alert, I just don't want to at this point. But, uh, we need to take stock about all the things that I have been doing lately and all the things that have kind of fallen off to the wayside. And I'm going to save that for one big video because there has been a lot of things, but there are a lot of... A lot of individual reasons for why certain things didn't happen. But you know what I'm getting at. War Thunder? I just don't really have the initiative to play War Thunder right now. I, the French tree has come out for War Thunder, and I look at it, I go... More grinding in an uncomfortable game? And even though the... The, the end rank French bomber is this comically overarmed jet plane, which is very neat. And also they get a Sky Raider that's better than the American Sky Raider for some goddamn reason. I think it has... Damn near close Vietnam era ordinance. So, um, even though that's interesting, I just, I look at it and I think about the grind for War Thunder. And I don't want to go play it. In this game, the grind may be long, but as you're seeing here, it's nice. It's not painful. It's not, I'm not having situations where I'm having the fun torn out of my hands over and over and over again. Which, some people might get bored of, because, you know, if there's no significant challenge, no significant risk, people will just get bored because it's easy. I understand how that works, but I think this game has kind of a nice balance. Or rather, it's kind of... I suppose it's interesting enough and kind of a nice balance that it's sort of a nice rehab from War Thunder. Because, holy fucking shit, War Thunder can just be annoying sometimes. 
and it doesn't help that Gaijin are kind of unreliable developers. Yeah, Wargaming isn't terribly reliable as well, but honestly, Gaijin's game de gameplay department really just needs to get slapped upside the head most of the time. The people who came up with 2.0 for this need a medal. So, yeah. The grind in this isn't that bad. And even though it's kind of easy at some points because you are fighting bots, it can just be kind of nice to just play it sometimes. So that's a selling point, honestly. It's not an autistic sort of aircraft Spurglord like device, but it does have very interesting endgame jets that you won't really see. It has the flapjack. War Thunder doesn't have the flapjack. And so it's at least visually interesting in some regards even though it's not a sim, and it's kind of just fun to play sometimes. It's kind of hard to argue whether or not you should spec into it really hardcore, like, and just become an, like, an ultimate killing machine at this game and know its ins and outs in every single perfect way, but you see me, I'm not really trying all that hard, and, I, well, I'm kind of just rolling around doing very well nearly every game. So, um, you don't need to necessarily do that to have fun. Like, the other games in this sort of, well, in the trio here, where you actually do need to learn the ins and outs, and they kind of force you into gameplay that you may or may not like. This game, it seems to have either, it's either, the gameplay doesn't care that much, so I don't, I'm not necessarily forced into any sort of decisive, meta-compliant gameplay style, or it just fits me like a glove that I don't actually notice. I'm not sure which yet, but yeah. It's just kind of fun to play around a bit, and that's not necessarily a bad thing in terms of video games. Because remember, we play video games for fun, right? Right? We like a challenge. You challenge having a challenge and then overcoming the challenge is rewarding. It's cathartic. Makes you feel better. But we do still want to have fun, right? It's kind of soulless if you get over the challenge and there's nothing else left but more challenges and nev never really having a moment to rest. Right? Right? You like video games and fun, right? I'm rambling again, but let's get back into the grind.